Change it up. We're just going to open it up. James, what kind of question you got? Brent, you ready to go for the spring? And I know you've come up with some scoring and things. So tell yeah, us about it's gonna all be, the scoring that's going on. I, don't, I can't even keep track. I don't know how we came up with what we did. I just know that um, I didn't understand that we gave the offense points for punting. They get to quit, right. give up, and then punt. I'm not sure how that's an achievement and, and pointable. Uh, but they're getting them. Uh, so... I guess the defense has a little bit of, they get five for, for forcing a punt. So, no, it's going to be a lot of fun. We've had, uh, we had Jeopardy earlier uh, today, Team Jeopardy, and that was fun. Just trying to, uh, you know, what our guys do year round, the demands on college football players, the scrutiny that they're under. I know a lot of people don't feel bad for them. I don't either, uh, but, I, but I love them and appreciate them. And uh, so let them have some fun uh, in the middle of the, of the doing uh, is, you know, when you can do that, you know, it's a great thing. So. Uh, you know, we obviously had to change our format, and you know, some of that was decided by uh, you know not having enough available offensive linemen to uh, you know be able to put two teams out there, two separate teams. So this gives us a chance to uh, you know keep the offense you know together and, and not spread them too thin. And uh, it's going to be like I said, going to be a fun day. It's going to be a beautiful day. And, and again, our guys have, you know, this is the one third of this time of the year as far as developing your team and, uh, you know, in this phase of, of uh, you know, the spring and then, you know, give our guys a chance to finish up strong uh, in the classroom and uh, get their bodies right. There's we've got, I think, 42 players are going to do paid micro internships around the country. Uh, we've got, give or take, another 20 plus guys that I think they're going to South Africa to do a, a service trip and uh, then we'll get back and you know at the end of uh, May that first few days into June our guys are right back at it and they'll, they'll blow right through all the way to fall camp so uh, it's our transformation uh, phase of our program and uh, it's very real you know we've got 26 mid-years I think there's just under 40 guys that have never you know walked out here in an Oklahoma uniform and so this will be their first opportunity for that and then when we get to the beginning of June, we'll have, you know, another 12 guys will show up, uh, maybe a few more uh, that, you know, will join these guys. And so building our, our team, uh, you know, one day at a time and uh, developing our identity one day at a time. It's incredibly important that our guys uh, deeply understand, you know, how we do what we do and then why we do what we do. And there's got to be belief in, in that, you know, for, for us to be able to, you know, have a chance to be a team that can hang a banner uh you know that's it's going to take that and better teams uh you know do things you know well together and so been really pleased with the work uh the competition the hunger uh, the guys that are, have been incredibly coachable uh, humble and uh have come on the edge of their seat whether it's in the meeting room or out here on the practice field it's been a very competitive uh spring so I don't have to say it quite as much that everything matters, but it does. And these guys have bought into that. And so that's been a lot of fun to watch and it's been a lot of fun for the the returning players, watching them, uh, you know, nurture, you know, the, the vision of the program and uh, the culture uh, that we uh, are about. And, uh, you know, take these young guys even, or new guys, even if they're competing with them and, you know, welcome them with open arms. And, and and try to help facilitate their their transition. Uh, that's a very real thing. And certainly, if a guy's stiff arming somebody, that's a very real thing too. And to watch our guys, uh, you know, have humility and um, you know, just the maturity to understand that we're trying to build a great football team, and it, it's going to take more than just you uh, to be our best. Uh, you know, that's cool to see that that maturation take place. Um, you know, looking for, you know, better opportunity. Um, you know, I'm not one to speak for them. Um, but, uh, you know, Jaden, uh, you know, obviously he played, had a, you know, more of a substantial role. Uh, Corey was just still a young guy, you know, coming up. But uh, both of them two really good young guys that, again, I think you're just looking for, uh, you know, more of an opportunity you know, Jaden really wants to play, have an opportunity to play more inside in the slot. Uh, you know, 
in, you know, as a defensive back, the nickel quote unquote position. And, uh, you know, if he was going to stay here, I needed him to be corner. I got, I got guys to play inside. So, you know, that's, that's it. You know, he just has his one last window to, uh, to, you know, continue to develop and, uh, maybe enhance his opportunities, uh, with a, with a better, clearer opportunity for himself. So, you know, I'm just appreciate those guys, all their hard work, you know, while they were here. What are the dynamics a head coach has to consider when you think about the spring portal? Losing a guy in the middle or after spring practice yeah, and you, potentially you, getting some new guys in. Yeah, just again you look at your roster, what your what your needs are and you know, where you feel like you, you know, somebody uh, could, you know, make you better if it's, you know, short term or maybe again if it's we really would rather have somebody that has a few more years, you know, in the program. There's uh, you maybe had some great young players, but they're not quite ready to play great yet. Uh, so maybe it's a one-year guy that you're looking for that could, you know, help you, uh, you know, continue to grow and develop as a as a program. You know, maybe create a bridge for those guys to uh, to mature and and be ready. So there's a lot that goes into it, but you know, obviously it's it's need based. You know, uh, based on where you feel like you're not quite where you need to be, whether that's the numbers or maybe maybe that's the play, uh, either one or both. Ran his Marcus Major uh, hurt or what's going he, on? He uh, he he banged up his. <laughs> he came back, was practicing, and then he just banged up his hand, mm -hmm. and uh, just a slight fracture that uh, he'll be back and at it here in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So hate it for him, uh, but he. Uh, we intentionally held him out. He, we could have started him day one at spring ball uh, to be full go, but just wanted to help him continue to, uh, you know, get strong and healthy and uh, not risk him. And, and But it really created opportunity, you know, for those other guys. Javante was out here for the first half of spring ball and then, you know, Gavin and uh, Tawi and Caleb Hicks and uh, – uh, Smothers and it gave them all a great opportunity to get a bunch of reps and uh, really uh, impressed with that group of guys. Coach, there's been a lot of discourse on social media and amongst the fan base this week about uh, just how big a vibrant spring game environment and atmosphere can be for recruiting. So, from a recruiting perspective, how big, how large do you think the spring game can be? No, it's very large. However, what's the largest uh, that's large? <laughs> like it's at the top of the Richter scale. Um, again, the environments matter. Guys want to, uh, you know, come and play in a, in a championship type of environment. You know, where it's passion. People are passionate. There's intensity. There's an expectation. There's high standards. Uh, there's support. And you know, this is an opportunity for us to show that you know we've been an uncommon program. We're not like we all play football, uh, but we all ain't the same. This is you know the winningest program in the modern era. This is a program that has set the standard in college football uh, for you know competing and winning you know championships, and uh, so uh, this is a place right here behind us that you know has the best winning percentage in all of college football since 2000, and so you know everything matters. We say that all the time. Everyone has a part in making this place special. It's a great opportunity. So whether that's on TV, and certainly uh, we'll have you know 100 guys and their families here uh, in in as they evaluate their opportunities, you know, we're not competing against, uh, you know, a junior college or NAI school. You know, we're recruiting against the best of the best in college football. Um, so, uh, you know, everything matters in their decision process. And, and uh, this is a big part of it, you know, for them to be able to, to play the game they love in front of a, you know, a packed house and in a hostile environment. And even it's just a spring game. You know, people love the Sooners, and as I told the players, man, this is – don't take this for granted. You know, this is a place that, man, you – you know, these people care. And uh, – but but when they come to watch the Sooners, you you have an opportunity to give them uh, hope, uh, to give them inspiration, uh, to give them healing. Uh, you know, people go through whatever they're going through, Life 101, but, man, when they come to see the Sooners play and compete, uh, you have an opportunity to bring them just, you know, a lot of happiness. And – and then I told him there's, you know, Alan Patrick was out here and it was, uh, you know, great to see him. And so just talking about how the, you know, the former players, this is a, as strong of an alumni group as there is in college football. The brotherhood is very real uh, at Oklahoma. And uh, so, 
you know, just want our guys to always have perspective. I think perspective always drives performance. And when you understand that, you know, they're not impressed with you when you make this thing all about you, you know, you know, you, there's been some amazing players, college football's best to ever play the game and played right here and put on the Sooner uniform. So you better embrace that. You better respect that. And what you do proves what you believe. So uh, show up with that kind of a mindset that you care, that you're humble, that you're thankful, uh, that you, you know, have an appreciation for the small amount of time that you're here and you want to leave your mark. And I tell them all the time, your best should be your trademark. Your best should be your trademark. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, but it does matter because people are watching. And so uh, so I think it's great for our own players. It's your first time uh, other than, you know, once we start the season next year, uh, this fall, that you get a chance to be in front of a, you know, uh, you know, 70 plus thousand people and see these guys get out on the field and operate and manage and, you know, play through all of it and uh, play, you know, in front of a packed house. It matters for them too as we develop our team. And so that's a tremendous advantage, you know, for us. But I can't wait. And, you know, uh, the palace is going to be popping inside and out. And our guys are, man, they're really excited to, to show you the, the improvement, the growth, the development. And, uh, and every year you start completely over, good or bad. Just like I told a, a bunch of the uh, the guys that got here, whether it was a transfer guy or a guy that's, you know, Gentry Williams, the number one player in the state you know, several years ago, or Jackson Arnold, the top quarterback in, in high school last year. Their butts are in the back of the line earning it every day. And all that, none of that stuff travels. You know, you gotta you gotta line up. You gotta earn it. You're gonna get what you earn. Nobody's gonna give Oklahoma anything. This is a program. We're gonna have to earn everything it's get gets because we don't sneak up on anybody. And so I want them as we develop the team to to don't take that for granted either. And you gotta be intentional about everything that you're doing. So, you know, having a great atmosphere uh, to answer your question is a tremendous tremendous advantage. And uh, for where we're trying to go, uh, n none of it's easy. And uh, so. Uh, this is the next step for us and, and a chance for us as a program and certainly as a university to show that this place is uncommon. This is not the norm. Brent, after Saturday, you'll cut this group loose, so to speak, at a different part of the season. Mm -hmm. Do you know who the leaders of Team 129 are, who, who those guys are after these last four or five uh, That's a great question, and um, we're going to have captains tomorrow. You'll see, or Saturday, rather, you'll see who the coaches have picked as their, their captains. And... Uh, there's a lot of guys, you know, when we're when the coaches were choosing some for the game, and he was like, Well, that's a great one. Oh, that's a good one. That's a really I'm like, how about that guy? What you're gonna do pick him and then you're not gonna pick him? And they had some really tough decisions to make. So there's we've got great depth from a leadership standpoint. Uh, really uh, proud up to this point, you know, and you know this is gonna be a player driven team. You know, if we're gonna have a, a successful season, it's gonna take great leadership. And, you know, guys that are willing to uh, do things that are unpopular and, you know, be uncomfortable. And uh, you can't lead, you know, from the back. You got to get your butt in the front. And so it takes a lot of courage to be a leader, I mean, a lot of toughness, and a lot of perseverance. Because a lot of times you're in that leadership role, and the people you're trying to lead, you know, they're hard to kind of lead. And, uh, you know, so I get that question from guys like, well, what if, you know, they're not listening? Well, you got to keep showing up. You got to wear their ass out. That's what you got to do. Like, you let them know you're not going away. And, you know, don't get better, get better through it. And, and find a better way to lead. You know, you can't just yell at everybody. You know, they listen to the coach when he's yelling because, you know, it feels like he has to. You know, player to player, you know, uh, you're gonna to have to figure out another way, you know, but show up every day and lead by example. But I, I really think we have a, a chance to have great, great leadership here. And then even, you know, some of the guys that are brand new, they've really um, plugged right in uh, from a leadership standpoint, you know, and understand the value of that. So, uh, you know, that, that's gonna be a, a position of strength, in my opinion, you know, for this team. Do you think the fact that so much changes nowadays from year to year makes something like the spring game more important to the fans in terms of uh, making that Yeah, connection? I didn't think about that until you just said it. But I can see, yeah, I mean, we've, again, got, I don't know how many it is, but we're going to run, you know, 90-plus guys out there. And, you know, so a third of them are going to be brand new. And then, you know, everybody wants to see, you know, the improvement, you know, across the board with other players returning. But I'm sure that's a big part of it, too, see the – 
the new players and what they're all about. And remember, this is just one practice. That's what I would tell everybody. Watch with caution. You know, there's going to be a body of work that you can be able to, to judge them all. But this is a great opportunity to see him run around in their uniform and, uh, and try to block and catch and tackle and uh, cover and all that kind of stuff. So I can see the excitement for that without question. Because of the portal, Brent, do you have to coach different in the spring? In the, you know, several years ago, coaches were reluctant to name a starting quarterback because they didn't want the quarterback mm -hmm. leaving. But now anybody can leave any time. Do, do you coach any different because of that? No, just try to. I've always just tried to lead from a place of uh, toughness, of honesty, of consistency. And I don't want to try to trick anybody into staying here. You know, I want guys that are completely committed. And to look, we're dealing with 18, 19, 20-year-olds, so I get it. There's a Sometimes there's some real mature 18, 19, 20-year-olds, and sometimes there's some impulsive and emotional, uh, you know, guys that are not stable. And uh, that's a real thing, too, you know. And so uh, do you have to be sensitive to that? Yeah, but at the same time, you, you just be, you know, open and honest and, you know, I'm willing to adapt and adjust, you know, however I need to. But as far as coaching and developing the team, you know, you know I'm just going to continue to be, you know, who, who we are and who I've been. Does it change how you operate depth charts or anything like that where maybe a guy looks at it and says, okay, I've fallen behind a little bit and maybe I go. Does, it, does that get affected? Well, you, you talk all the time about, you know, not worrying. Again, this is pre-portal. You know, don't worry about depth charts, you know. Create value for yourself by how you do what you do. So when you get your opportunity, whatever that opportunity is, man, you be ready. And do the most you can, the best you can, with the, whatever opportunity you can. Not everybody has the same role on the team, but everybody has the same opportunity to create value for themselves. And so, uh, you know, that's what we focus on more than anything. And earn trust, earn, you know, be dependable and accountable and reliable and available too. You know, you got to stay healthy, you know, go to class, you know, live right off the field, you know, you know, be a hard worker. Don't allow anybody in the program to work harder than you. Show up with a great attitude, be coachable, have some humility, and just put the work in. And, and this is a developmental game. So this is the anti, you know, developmental game, you know, the portal and you know, the way it stands now is anti, you know, development. But the game is a developmental game. You can't run from your problems. And so I challenge the guys all the time, face your giants. You know, don't listen to the outside noise. There's lots of people with opinions all the time. You know, no matter where you go, it's going to be really, really hard. But when you come to this building, you're, you're going to be shown value. Uh, you're going to be shown encouragement. Uh, you know, there's going to be seeds of truth, seeds of, you know, uh, accountability. And, but this is a place where we're going to lift you up. You know, and we're gonna call you up, not call you out. And but you know, you but and we're gonna strain you and challenge you and take you to places you can't take yourself. And uh, but we're gonna meet you where you're at. And, and so, again, we just try to be real and open and honest and connected. You know, coming from a place of being genuine. And if that still ain't enough, you know, we wish you well. And we're trying to you know develop that and attract that too. And. Uh, I know that I, I'm not naive. I, I get it. You know, I know how some sometimes it's not going to work out uh, just like. But at the end of the day, you know, we're going to be a relational program, not a transactional program, even in a transactional environment. Uh, when they walk into this building, it's, it's not going to be that. And uh, and I do think that that that'll have a uh, an opportunity to allow us to uh, to quote unquote be different in some respects we're not the only team that like that I might act like oh okay we're we're the only one that, that has that kind of a mindset but that is our philosophy and that is uh, our culture and again this program has a soul and I want these players to know that and uh, and again they're going to live a long life without the game of football a long life and uh, so make the most of this opportunity you know to grow in every part of your life the football part's really important and uh, but there's a true and proc rec record, you know, with with this staff. And you know, if, if you just stick to it and you show up every day and you keep working and grinding, you know, this game will honor that. And uh, don't look for the path of least resistance. That's don't buy that lie. And and again, every once in a while, God has been doing it for several years, and he just doesn't have a, a role of any sort. 
he needs to go find somewhere we can get a, a fresh start. You know, that's good too. Or maybe he can't live up to the expectations, the standards, you know, uh, the values, uh, the little things like going to class, go to tutors, show up on time, show up with a good attitude, uh, you know, give me great effort, live right off the field, you know, you know don't screw up in the community. And again, we're here to help these guys, all of them grow up and learn. Uh, but, you know, some, some guys will, um, they, they can't adhere, adhere to that. And uh, that's a small, very small number, but that there is a number that maybe you need to find somewhere where you can go do whatever you want to do. You know, you can show up whenever you want to show up. And uh, coach can tell you it's good when it's absolutely not. And uh, that it's good enough. And uh, so, and again, I'm, I don't want to trick anybody to come to Oklahoma. I mean, I want them to have very clear uh, vision about what our expectations are, what the standards are, how how challenging it's going to be. And I, I don't think it's any different here than it is anywhere when whatever locker room you go into, it's going to be really, really, really hard. And, and, and our job as a staff is to help them manage life that's really hard, you know, and the game of football, you know, that's really hard. Uh, the best that they possibly can and they need that you know they need that support uh you know life's life's complicated football's not real complicated and these guys are that's what they love to do they're confident in doing and but it's still really hard and challenging and so we, we want our guys to to you know embrace that you know embrace that vision so some of that's anti-portal uh but i'm just like i'm i was i got this big thick here thing it, it's got all these accountability uh points here you know and where we were a year ago at this time 15 months ago to where we're at today these teams there's uh there's you know 11 teams here made up you know, our team our players drafted the teams and there's a, everything from you know the, everything from soul mission nutrition strength and conditioning sports med equipment academics we grade them on all of it and we do it weekly and we keep a running tally and, and then if we're negative in the points by the, for the team, then they're running extra. And, and we can't find a way to make this team run. And it doesn't mean everybody's in the positive, but there's so much goodness uh, on each team that the, the – and that's the challenge. There's a few guys on each team that are okay with being at minus one, minus two. And they ain't minus – we were minus 30 with some guys, plenty of guys, you know, 12 months ago in the 40s with some guys. And it's embarrassing. And uh, we don't have anything remotely close to that right now. I got two guys that are in double digits in the negative, And it's not very far into the double digits. But that stuff matters. Those players that we're counting on that, that are right around zero or maybe even, you know, in the negative two, negative four, those are the guys going to keep us from hanging on a banner with this football team. And so all we got to do, what we got to do is get them, okay, we got to get them on the right side of it. And, uh, and it's a group of guys that, you know, I believe will accept that challenge because you can't be a chameleon and, and just be an elite program. We can't be a great team if we've got a bunch of chameleons on the team. So, uh, you know, uh, everything they do matters. So just trying to help them grow up as strong men and strong men and better men are better Sooners and uh, are better players. Yeah, I'm not going to announce it to anybody, but uh, y'all will figure it out. Uh, and not much, but there are some spots we definitely need to. Mm -hmm. Is that number crunch tougher than ever if you put a walk on <laughs> on scholarship and then you have to go back and – well, you have to do that, you think? Yeah, I mean, we you know, when we put some of those guys on, obviously there's, a, there's an arrangement and an agreement that this is what it's going to look like here in a few months. Yeah. So trying to help guys where, where we can and – uh, you know, make sure, uh, you know, that you're able to address all your needs and uh, help everybody when you can because the grind is and the demand's real for everybody, even if they don't have, like, this substantial role out there. It's real for all of them. And so you want to, you know, be able to support everybody if and when you can. But, yeah, getting 